and we're back. Hey everyone, I'm so glad you're here tonight. If you were here last night, welcome back. If you were not, I'm glad you're here with us tonight. Make sure you introduce yourself in the chat. Um, say hello to everybody. If you can set up a profile, you can upload a profile photo so we can see who you are. Um, we might recognize you by your name, but maybe not. So uh, make sure you say hello uh, and we'll interact throughout this moment. This is part two of a four part series on worship. I'm so excited to be with you. Um, this is exactly what I care about most. And especially in a time like this and somewhat of a crisis moment, um, it's really important that we learn what it means to be private worshipers, that we learn how to spend time with God by ourselves at our houses. And you might be with your family tonight uh, as we go through this together. Um, you might be by yourself. Uh, I just, uh, my prayer for you is that we come out of this understanding better than ever before what it means to worship, what worship actually means, and how our private worship impacts our corporate worship. So um, let's sing together as we start, and we'll end with prayer just like every time. Um, we're going to go to this, go at this together in the name of Jesus Christ. So let's sing. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your prayer tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord so hold and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Your holy prayer. 
presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me, and I, I'm lost without you. lost without you and I I'm lost without you so lost without you Hope you guys found um, a comfortable environment to be in tonight. I uh, imagine, similar to last night, you might be sitting comfortable on your couch. Um, and I'm excited to just uh, be with you. I know I'm in my home right now, and you're in your home, and um, that's good because what this means is face to face, we're building community right now. And in a difficult time where building community doesn't. Um, really have a definition right now what that looks like uh, it's just awesome that we have an opportunity like this a tool like this uh, to be able to connect a little bit so please put information in the chat on who you are if you're here say your name tell us you're here introduce yourself uh, like I said last night make fun of me ask me questions um, I had somebody uh, ask about the pictures on my wall last night and the scripture on them um, I took those pictures uh, a couple, a few years ago, I really love those photos. Uh, they're from my favorite place on earth, Yellowstone National Park. My wife put scripture on top of them and framed them for me as a gift. And uh, I love being able to look at them. And so if you have questions about what's kind of uh, around me, um, ask and we'll interact. But more importantly than that, we're going into the word of God together tonight. So uh, there is an integrated Bible. If you have your Bible with you, that's great. If not, there's one right in here, um, and I'll be posting the scripture passages in the chat as we go through this, and uh, if you miss something, ask. I'll try and get it to you as quick as I can, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I'm just, like I said, I'm thankful to be together again tonight. I'm excited to see what God is doing in and through the few days we're going to be sharing together, and we have a lot of things planned for GCC Anywhere for you to interact with. Um, this is just one of the many options we have like young adults next Tuesday night. You're going to be live together, uh, youth group that just last night they met live. They did small groups through Google Hangouts and, um, you might already know what's coming and what we've been doing. You might already have a list of things. Um, and if you do great, if you don't just keep your eyes open, um, keep, keep checking your email. We'll send these things out. Check social media. Instagram is GCCWS underscore gram or facebook.com slash GCCWS. Um, we want to provide as many opportunities for connections as possible right now. Um, I'm going to drop a lot of this info into the chat. So if you missed what I said out loud, it'll be there. Um, take a picture of your group uh, together. Put me in the background and tag me and put hashtag GCC anywhere on Instagram or Facebook. Um, we just want to know you're here. We want people to know that you can uh, interact as we go through this. So I do want to give a big shout out to Pam Gockenauer, who is the winner of our Simon Says Toilet Paper. Last night, we uh, gave out a roll of toilet paper as a prize, um, and Pam was one of the winners, and I chose her name from a list. Um, so Pam, I don't know how you want to retrieve your roll of toilet paper. If you want, I'll put it in the mail. Um or you can pick it up from the church next time you're at the church, <clears throat> which I obviously might be a little while. 
Um, by the time you get it, it might not be quite the crisis it is right now. Um, but once the world gears back up and you want that role, Pam, it's all yours. Just let me know how you want to get it. So, all right, let's get into this. <clears throat> Excuse my uh, clearing my throat here. <clears throat> all right, yesterday we discussed what it means to worship. That it's a relationship with God that turns into obedience and expression. We saw some examples from both the Old Testament and the New Testament about worship. Uh, worship styles that people expressed um, under the old law and under the new law. Um, we talked about the different uh, passages that work together to kind of build a definition of worship and uh, the fact that we were created to be worshipers. Um, we discussed that really as worshipers who were um, made to bring praise to God, that God has to take a precedent in our lives. He has to sit as number one priority. So under the definition that we are using um, to kind of take us through this series, um, worship is a relationship with God, and God has to be in that blank, a relationship with God consumed by obedient living that results in an outpour of expression. So as we go through tonight, as we talk about forms of worship, we're relating all of those back to that definition. And then tomorrow night, we're going to be talking about private worship and how to do that by ourselves. And then the last uh, night, night four, we're going to be talking about how corporately we can all be obedient in our expression of praise. So, um, yeah, I'm just, man, I'm excited to be sharing these things with you and I want you to share it with your family and friends. So let's, let's go straight into it. John four twenty three and 24, um, Jesus shared with the woman at the well, these words, true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and in truth for they are the kind of worshipers the father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. And Paul says to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual act of worship. Tonight, we're going to talk about how to be worshipers. We're going to talk about this from three perspectives, <clears throat> three positions. And the first position is going to be uh, living every moment as an expression of worship. The second position is literally your posture, your hands, your feet, face down, all of those things. Um, and our third position is what our belief informs uh, in our actions. So how our belief changes what we do. So those are the positions we're going to discuss tonight. Three positions uh, within worship that all come from what uh, worship forms are. So our first position, living every moment as an expression of our worship. How do we use this position uh, for God to be worshiped, the position that God has for us, uh, to worship. I'm going to make a list of some things for you, uh, right now, but I want you to add to the list in the chat room. These are, these are forms of worship. Okay. These are things that can be, um, used to bring praise and glory to God. First is learning and praying and reading your Bible and singing those are super simple ones. That's what we do on the weekend in worship. Like that's, that's kind of the basic, right? Those are four forms of worship. Then we have tithing. We have sacrificial giving, which is different from tithing, um, playing an instrument, teaching, preaching, working, counseling, encouraging, exhorting, serving in a church or serving outside of the church, serving anywhere in a shelter or uh, otherwise, adoption, parenting, uh, being a good sibling. Now I'm getting into some ones that aren't quite as common to hear. Driving. I know that might be difficult for you to say driving as a form of worship. <laughs> yeah, we won't go any further than that. Painting, drawing, writing songs. Guys, these are just. this is just a short list of 22 things I was able to make kind of quickly. The, the real list of all the number of forms of worship out there is unending. Um, and what that, the reason for that is because our definition is open-ended. Our definition is obedience that results in expression. So if, if that's what worship is, forms of worship are everywhere. Everything you do and say, um, put more in the chat if you can think of some more, but everything we do is an expression of our praise. Um, God is, wants us to be consumed with obedience and that obedience, he wants it to turn into expression. He wants to hear from us. He wants to, uh, to know that we love him. And, um, you know, in the last two weeks, uh, which is, 
Um, a lot's happened in the last two weeks, but I've received original songs from five people, five different people. Um, I've seen a ton of artists share new paintings on Instagram. Um, I've seen poets put out all kinds of new stuff. I've seen literally uh, hundreds of people begin to teach and preach online in a way that some of them never wanted to do prior to this. Um, I've uh, I've seen people just come out of the woodworks, come out of their shells with forms of worship right now in a unique situation. Just today, I received two new songs from two different people, um, and that's so exciting. We have an opportunity right now uh, really for a surge of great expression in our worship, and um, another way our forms of worship could really surge is caring for people, caring for the poor, caring for the elderly, um, picking up groceries for people, providing blankets for people. Uh, I drove through this city this afternoon. Man, there are a lot of people um, on our streets in Lancaster City here. And uh, that's sad to see and it's hard to see. And one of our forms of worship is providing for people who need care and love. So, um, you know, the, we talked about some of kind of the basic forms of worship. What are the biblical forms? What are some examples straight from scripture? Um, it's easy to talk about the day-to-day -day stuff. It's almost easier, but but to dig and see some really specific examples in scripture, um, there's hundreds of them, by the way, but I just, I pulled out a few that I want to share. First Corinthians 3, 17 says, and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the father through him. That's, I mean, that's a benediction people use all the time. <clears throat> it's an outstanding reminder of our definition of worship. Um, first Corinthians 10 31. So says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Just like, just like Colossians three seventeen, it's kind of like the definition, like everything we do, do it for worship. Everything, uh, we say, every choice we make, every decision. Acts sixteen twenty five says, and this is a more specific example, but Acts sixteen twenty five says about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening to them. Psalm 66, 17 shows the psalmist saying, I cried out to him with my mouth and his praise was on my tongue. Daniel 4.37, and we're going to talk about Daniel a lot tomorrow night. Daniel 4.37 shows us a king worshiping. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and glorify the king of heaven because everything he does is right and all his ways are just. And those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. Guys, these are just four kind of quick examples, a couple from the Old Testament, a few from the New Testament. Um, it's easy to see that worship is something that's more than just singing songs. I know that a lot of times people leave church and they say, man, worship was great today. And that's like, I get it. You're trying to encourage us as a band and like, that's really neat. And I appreciate the encouragement, but man, worship is the conversations you're having in the parking lot on the way home also. Worship is also how you treat your uh, waiters and waitresses at the diner uh, for lunch after church, right? Um, right now, worship is how you spend your time at home. Are you going to spend all your time sucked into um, just things that are going to waste it? Are you going to uh, binge, uh, binge watch shows the entire time you're stuck inside or... Are you going to use this as an opportunity to further the kingdom, further the gospel, uh, encourage your friends, stay connected to your family, get more connected to your family? Um, Kirsten Ditzler was in here last night, and she had a great point that um, it, it can feel like now is a great time to, uh, to take a break from the phone, but actually it's a great opportunity to stay connected and become more connected to family and friends that maybe you haven't talked to in a little while. This is an opportunity that we have. And like I said, not a solution. It's an opportunity. Um, and we need to take advantage of it. So I won't read uh, the whole passage, but there are some grand stories in scripture showing us worship. And here's four more that I want to share with you. Um, the weeping woman who poured her expensive jar of alabaster perfume all over the feet of Jesus, kissing his feet and then wiping them with her hair. In Mark, the widow who gave all she had, literally giving her last few pennies to worship God. And then Jesus himself worshiping his father in the garden, saying, not my will, but yours. 
King David in uh, 2 Samuel dancing with abandon. You probably know the story. It's funny to picture, but guys, these are more examples of just worshiping expressively and um, using different forms and different opportunities and ways um, to bring praise and uh, to pour out your obedience to God. What's so cool about it is that the forms are endless because worship as a function is expressed in obedience. So whatever you're doing, wherever you're at, just worship. Worship by pouring out your obedience to God. And it goes back to Colossians 3.17. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So that's our first position. Our first position is uh, caring for the forms, right? And our second position is actually physical. What do we do with our hands and our feet? How do we express worship? <clears throat> How do we express worship with our physical position? Revelation 4 is one of my favorite passages. Um, I often picture while worshiping this passage, and I envision what it would look like um, when I'm in heaven worshiping in the throne room at the feet of God. I'm going to read uh, verses 8 through 11. It's Revelation 4, verses 8 through 11. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under his wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created to have their being. Man, what does your physical position look like as a form of worship in obedient expression? Does your physical worship look like this? Do you Have you ever tried to fall down before him? To, to fall down at the feet of the one who sits on the throne. This is called lying prostrate, lying face down on the ground. And it's a physical expression of an obedient worship. It shows a humility before the Lord. Right now, as you have a lot of time in your home, find a quiet private space and try this. I want to encourage you to try this. Lay flat on your face as you're singing or praying or listening to a podcast or reading your Bible or uh, whatever you might be doing, try this. You might fall asleep if you're there too long, but um, it's worth the time to give it a shot and um, in humility, lie prostrate before the Lord. Um, Imagine yourself at the foot of his throne. We talked about King Nebuchadnezzar earlier. Um, There's another example of a king here in 1 Kings 8, 22 and 23. I'm going to read it for you. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands toward heaven. And he said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and showing steadfast love to your servants who walk before you with all their heart. If you're anything like me, you grew up in churches that have some people raising their hands and some not moving, right? You have uh, the holy, um, the amen section. That's what it was called in my Baptist church when I was a kid. You had the amen section. And then you had the, man, the statues, the holy statues, people who are just standing there completely rigid, unwilling to move. And let me tell you, that's okay, guys. That's all right, because either position is acceptable. Either posture in your worship, uh, either of those options is fine. If you haven't tried to mimic what King, uh, King Solomon did here, I would encourage you, give it a shot. So I want you to try some time in your private worship to symbolically reach toward heaven, symbolically reach toward him who sits on the throne. Um, Jesus, you know, as you praise him. So we saw Solomon here. First, we saw um, the creatures in Revelation. Now we saw Solomon spreading his hands toward heaven is what it says. Now, Matthew 9, 18 and 19 shows us two forms of worship. I want to actually point out both of them, but I'm going to read this. Matthew 9, 18 and 19 says, while he was saying these things to them, behold, a ruler came in and knelt before him saying, my daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. And Jesus rose and followed him. This man did two things. He both knelt before Jesus and he also petitioned the Lord of Lords for a need, a felt need that he had. So first, have you tried kneeling before the Lord? 
similar to stretching out your hands, similar to lying prostrate. It's a position that, that brings about a humility that forces you to really uh, see your position and, and understand who you're talking to. And so I want to encourage you to try and kneel. Uh, Take opportunities to um, kneel before the Lord, find a dark, quiet place in your house with your Bible and just read it. You know, I recommended it yesterday, but read Deuteronomy 6. We're going to be talking about it tomorrow, Deuteronomy 6. Um, It's a tremendous passage. Maybe tonight, get on your knees, lie prostrate, stretch out your hands to him and and worship. Um, The other thing this man did that I want to talk about is he petitioned the Lord, um, Matthew 7, 7 through 12 says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. Or which one of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Whew, guys, like that is scripture telling us to ask God for everything. And it's telling us that our Savior wants to give us good things. It literally says he wants to give us good things. John Piper, a tremendous um, author and preacher, responds to this passage by saying, This has proved, in my experience, to be one of the most motivating passages in all the Bible, to pray with a confidence of being answered. That confidence we get from the Lord is only found in the Lord. That confidence is not anywhere else in the world. The only place you can find hope is in Christendom and by asking the Lord for these things. Um, It's unparalleled. Part of our worship is asking him for things in our lives. So I love that passage because it shows us both um, kneeling at his feet, but also asking him for things. So whether you're lying prostrate, kneeling, lifting your hands, standing and not moving, any of these things, posture and position, they affect how we interact in our worship. Next time you read scripture, next time you pray, next time you sing or share the gospel with someone, pay attention to your posture, pay attention to your positioning it affects our worship as a form of expression. Notice how you're interacting. Notice how um, your position makes uh, gives you an understanding of humility before the Lord as you express your worship to him. And now our third, uh, third position, what we believe, informs what we do. So three positions tonight. The first position um, being the, the position of forms supporting function. The second is a physical position, our posture. And the third now is our position on belief. What we believe informs what we do. Um, So I'm going to ask for more interaction tonight. I know last night we played Simon Says, um, but tonight it's going to be a little bit easier. I am, however, going to ask you to get uncomfortable this time. Um, Throw off the Afghan for a moment, and I want to ask you to kneel wherever you are. I'm going to actually ask you to go up, go ahead and get up off the couch or wherever you might be. And I want to ask you to kneel. If you can physically kneel, I'd like to ask you right now to get on your knees as as we talk about this next bit of truth. You know, if we believe that God is truly in control of the details that affect our lives, then we believe he's a good God who loves us and cares for us. If we truly believe A, we have to believe B. If we think that he loves us and provides for us, He's a good God. If we think he's a good God that uh, cares for the details of our lives, then we believe he loves us and cares for us. It it just goes hand in hand. It's how these things work. Um, We must be willing to believe also that he created us for worship. If we believe those things, we have to believe that he created us to worship him and to praise him. So like we talked about last night, we were created to have a relationship with him that results in an obedient expression. And so right now, I want to encourage you on your knees to join with me in prayer, and then we're going to sing another song. Um, And as we sing this, pay attention to the fact that this is obedience and expression. I'm going to go ahead and get on my knees too. Um, Just give me a second to move these things uh, so I can join you down here. All right, so I'm on my knees as well. 
if there's ever been a time to be on our knees, I would say that it's right now, guys. If there's ever been a time that um, it's easy to feel a question or a fear or a concern, now's the time. And as we're on our knees together, however many of us are on our knees together right now, we're doing this in solidarity as an opportunity to say to the Lord, God, we humble ourselves. We put ourselves at the foot of your throne and we say you are God and we believe that you love us and we believe that you care for us and we believe that you want to give us good things and we believe that you want us to ask you for things and to sing to you and to pray to you. And right now we're going to do that. So let's pray. Go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes and uh, let's pray together. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. You are a God who gives us a promise and fulfills that promise. You told us that that you would be crucified painfully on the cross, but that you would rise from the grave and live again, and you fulfilled that promise, God. We affirm that we believe you created us to live lives in relationship with you in obedient expressions of worship, God. Let these forms of worship be more apparent to us. Let us see everything we're doing through this lens as we pursue a deeper understanding of private worship. God, let our positioning inform what we spend our time doing, our physical location, our physical posture, and our belief in you, God. We love you so much, and uh, we're here together to praise you. We're here together to learn better uh, what it means to be private worshipers. Be praised right now as we pursue truth alongside of our brothers and sisters in a digital community Jesus, we love you. We offer this sacrifice to you right now. All right, guys, let's sing together. I want to want to ask you to stay on your knees. And I know it's I know it's a funny feeling, maybe by yourself in your living room or uh, with your family, but let's sing. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good. You're good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh, let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days, oh, he is my song. You are good, you're good, oh. You're good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh, you're never gonna let, never gonna let me down, you're never gonna let never gonna let me down you're never gonna let never gonna let me down you're never gonna let never gonna let me down you are good you're good oh you are good you're good good you're good oh you are good you're good
you good Oh Let the king of my heart Be the mountain where I run The fountain I drink from Oh, he is my song Amen. Whew. Well, all right, guys. Before you go, uh, say hello in the chat. Um, you can get off your knees if you want. <laughs> um, please invite family and friends to join in uh, for the next two nights. I'm really thankful that we've been able to be a part of this community and build this thing um, that we're doing we're doing together. We're halfway through it, right? So we finished the first two sessions. Uh, we got two more nights together. Be praying for our country as we process the events around us, as the church pursues sharing the gospel in a new uh, platform. Guys, I know this is unique at times and weird at times. We just have to claim it. We have to say it. Um, but if we, if we share the gospel in the face of fear, how much easier will it be to face to, to share the gospel when the fear is gone, guys, like we have an opportunity for revival and it's here. And if we embrace it, great things are going to, great things are going to happen, man. Whew. I want to ask you to take a photo with your viewing party. Like I said before, hashtag at GCC anywhere, make sure it's on social media. We want this community to be community to be engaged and encouraged by each other. Um, we will be meeting again tomorrow night and then again Saturday night, just an hour after our worship service on Saturday night. So uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time each night. Um, if you missed last night, catch up on YouTube. I'll throw the link up again. Keep talking in the chat room. I'm going to be here for um, a, a few more minutes. I'm not sure how long, but ask questions, engage together. Um, tell us about how the Lord is working in your heart and in your life. If you need prayer, you can ask for private prayer. Um, we just want to be here for you guys. Email me, call us at the church. Uh, if you have questions, need encouragement. If something's going on in your life, if one of your family members is sick, um, we want to be there for you. So let us know. We will see you soon. And I'll see you guys in one day. See you tomorrow night.